So we are here with Tad Peelin, am I correct. saying that correct? Absolutely. Of Joe's Real Barbecue. Uh, right now we're in downtown Gilbert, but you also have a spot in Sky Harbor Airport, right? We did. It is currently uh, in uh, COVID hiatus mode. Okay. And so we uh, look forward to that be op- being open again soon. But yeah, they're in Terminal 4. We've been for quite a few years. And then you have another location as well, correct? We have another concept. We actually have a couple other concepts, but Joe's Farm Grill out mm-hmm. at Agritopia at Higley and Ray is ours as well, as you've indicated. And then we have a concept within a concept right here on the property. We have Topo, Arizona, where we serve... Uh. Uh, elote street corn and burritos okay, yep. and soft serve ice cream right here on the property. So we Which, have Topo, Joe's Real Barbecue, Joe's Real Barbecue, Sky Harbor, uh, and then Joe's Farm Grill out of Higley and Ray. And so the spot that we're at now, um, for those listening, if you've not been here before, mm-hmm. when you're walking down the street of downtown Gilbert, mm-hmm. the street corn faces out as well. So you can purchase just stuff to eat as you're walking down the street right that's exactly correct that's exactly why it's designed exactly the way it was uh, with a uh, gopher on top Uh, if you think you're going to miss the building and you look up and you see an 18 foot gopher uh, you've you've found the spot (laughs) and so yeah we we absolutely built it intending people to walk up and and grab a burrito to eat on the run and so I haven't been in this area too frequently recently. I used to do some work over here, Mm -hmm. and this was a spot that we frequented. And so am I correct in remembering it that that was built up just a couple of years ago, right? Topo or? Topo. Yeah, Topo opened in uh, March of 2019. Okay. So your memory is quite good. Yeah, so, uh, and once again, for people who have not been to this location, it is... It almost feels magical to me. I was telling Eric was. that it, uh, it almost <laughs> feels like, like when you're going into a restaurant at Disneyland where yeah. it kind of transports you to a different feeling. It doesn't yeah. feel like you're just in any old restaurant. And a lot of that is the styling. You know, you have um, the big facade that looks like I was saying, like almost an old courthouse building in like a small town city in Kansas or something. And you've got the big uh, bubble lettering all stylized and the pecan smoked meats thing. You really you get in the mood to start eating some barbecue before you actually even get up and look at the uh, place where you make your order. I'm sure that was a very intentional strategy. Incredibly intentional, very perceptive on your part. And um, yeah, I think it's it speaks to the nature of our partnership. So Joe Johnston is a concept guy. Mm-hmm. If you ever asked, you know, amongst our triad here, uh, who the concept partner is, that's Joe. And okay. Joe can take a doodle on a napkin and bring it to fruition 10 years later. Wow. Um, and that's exactly what he did here. You know, this is this building has a wonderful history. This was built in 1929 as the Tone Building, and uh, it was the second grocery store in town. It was the Safeway okay. Pay and Take It. And in 1929, they really didn't need two grocery stores because right. there wasn't a lot going on in the economy, as yeah. you recall. So um, it didn't make it as a, as a Safeway very long, but it became very, uh, many things over the years until the Johnston brothers bought, bought it. And uh, yeah, we opened in 1998. When did they buy it? Or like around that time is when they yeah, purchased it? I would assume they closed yeah. in 96 or, or 90, uh, probably 97. Okay. And then you guys built this, you said 98? Yeah, we opened on January 20th of 1998. Okay. What was going on down here? Because I know mm-hmm. now, like, this place is, like, it's awesome, right? You come down here at night, you see all the lights, you see yeah. the people. Uh, there's so many different places you can go to. What was it like when when you guys had this? I can tell you exactly what it was like. Mm-hmm. It, uh, I see you looking out the window, actually. You're, <laughs> you're envisioning it. I am, you are. <laughs> because I'm, there are probably not a lot of people that have been downtown Gilbert as many hours as I have in yeah. the last 25 <laughs> years. And so I've seen it uh, f- become really special. I mean, you've alluded yeah. to the fact that there's a nightlife in Gilbert. That's yeah. just, that was unthinkable 10, 15 years ago. But I can tell you in 1998, to directly answer your question, that uh, we were the only... Uh, lunch dinner restaurant in downtown Gilbert there was a breakfast restaurant we had a sideburns restaurant right across the street so breakfast was covered lunch and dinner were covered and people in downtown Gilbert really didn't think they would need anything else ever Mm. and uh, they were quite wrong and the town has had wonderfully explosive growth and the type of growth has been just what you would ask for if you're in business it's uh gilbert's a great place to do business it's very affluent it's very highly educated in terms of its demographic and so uh it has evolved into what you see now and now you have uh sam fox and his concepts down uh downtown you have um 
uh, Postino, you have, uh, it, it's grown up. Yeah, and uh, we, we were happy to have been in on the infancy stage, but we're thrilled to see it uh, as it's grown up. What sparked that? Like, what created that that surgence of activity? It, it Gilbert's growth and yeah. and the way in which they handled it. Frankly, you know, many towns. Well, well we're the largest town in the nation, by the way. We're not hmm. the largest city, but we're the largest town. largest town. town. And what for what many, is that many years, category? Uh, well, there are towns and there are cities in terms of municipalities, okay. and we're the largest town in the United States no, of America. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it based on like population overall or population density? Population overall. I okay. mean, we're, we're, we're coming up on 300,000 people in Gilbert, wow. Arizona. And the growth, not only has it been explosive, I mean, we've had many years when we were the fastest growing municipality in the nation, over wow. 100,000, um, but it's been controlled and the infrastructure is in place. And uh, I think our town leadership's done an excellent job of ensuring that they kept up with growth and they made developers pay for growth so that it didn't come out necessarily of the public dole. So um, yeah, I think they've done a great job and uh, I think the result is a place people really, really enjoy uh, strolling. You know, we've talked mm-hmm. about the pedestrian yeah. aspect. That just didn't happen. We didn't have any night draws. In fact, when we opened, uh, there were no bowling alleys. There were no office store. Uh, you didn't go get office supplies in Gilbert. There were many things missing, yeah. but many of those things uh, pertain to a night draw. And now we actually have a reason for people to come downtown Gilbert on uh, any night of the week. And it's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, obviously this concept as it stands now is very well known in the local food and beverage community. It's kind of um, one of the shining stars of Gilbert, I would say. Thank you. And so I'm curious, when you guys opened up originally, Mm -hmm. how close was it to the way things are now? Because it feels like a place that's been here for even longer than 20 years. So how how much has changed? It's interesting because everything has changed and nothing has changed. Okay. (laughs) I would say if you walked in our doors on Tuesday, January 20th of 1998 and you ordered here um, and you walked in today, you would find it similar in many Mm -hmm. regards. You would find it similar in that we still have pretty much the protein lineup, uh, the the meats, you know, brisket and pork. If you don't, you know, engage well in those, Mm -hmm. uh, you won't last long at barbecue. But our (laughs) our meat lineup, our homemade sides lineup, even our homemade dessert lineup Mm -hmm. has has, uh, withstood the test of time. Mm -hmm. So it it still looks the same in that regard. Um, We have done Hopefully, as, as you've uh, alluded, many of the changes that we've made or the improvements that we've made, you know, in terms of high speed Wi-Fi so that you can sit down and still get some work done and things like that. Uh, many of those things are transparent to our customers. OK, but we you know, we now have digital menu boards for you to decide what you'd like to eat. Um, we have curbside dining. Who would have thunk, you know, that we would uh, have a need, a demand for curbside dining. And now we fill uh, 11 curbside dining spots where people are literally rolling out of here 30 seconds after they, they come up mm-hmm. with their food having been prepaid wow, and they're on their nice. way with their, with their meal. So there have been many changes and yet we still have that beautiful mural um, that uh, local artist Pete Martinez did for us. You know, he worked on that much of 1997 to get us ready for opening in 98. So this is a, an original. That's an original wow. and it's based on an original oil and it's just gorgeous and it speaks to what our town looked like in the 1940s this place speaks to what it looked like in the 1940s Um, even recently we've added what i think is a very cool addition of that photo booth Mm -hmm. that's a working uh, photo booth that is taking your photograph your black and white photograph And then behind the scenes, it takes four minutes and 30 seconds for it to dip into the developer, to lift it up, to dry, to move over. It's very, very cool. It's called Funky Photo Booth. That's awesome. And so, you know, even in what we've added, we've attempted to have a nod to the past. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet we did a a refresh where we wanted to keep the beautiful uh, 1948 John Deere tractor to speak to the uh, agrarian roots of Gilbert, Arizona and our place and our people. And yet we've refreshed, you know, with nice new new booths and we've kept up with the times. You got a digital menu, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with a place that is this stored and has been around for so long, but has done so intentionally, there's obviously many, many things to talk about. So we'll dig more into Joe's itself in a minute. But I'm curious, were you into barbecue before this concept became a thing? 
Most definitely, all of us were, and we, we have our very distinctly different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, I spent uh, 17 years with American Airlines in Dallas area, and uh, certainly uh, barbecue plays a role in the mm -hmm. Texas scene, the Houston scene. It's very regional, you know? Yeah. It's, there, are, there are very few foods in our country um, that are as destination specific as barbecue, you know, and you have people in the Northeast who, you know, will talk to you about their pulled pork with their coleslaw on top. And then you've got people in Houston that, you know, Houston is the way it is and Austin and so on and so forth. Yeah. And so, um, it was our desire to take all the best elements uh, of those things. Joe had spent quite a bit of time in Texas. My brother, Tim, who's our third partner, uh, had spent quite a bit of time in Texas. Uh, and we, we had seen, we attempted to see barbecue all over the nation. It's mostly a United States thing, certainly mm -hmm. 25 years ago. And we want to take the best of all of those things and then incorporate what was truly unique um, to Arizona in terms yeah. of our spice profile, our flavor profile, citrus, and all of those things to ensure um, that we were doing Arizona proud because no one really had an answer for what does Arizona barbecue look like, yeah. in our opinion, until about January of 1998. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, a, that's an interesting component because when you talk about the, the feeling and the perception when you come in here, the things that are um, subliminal, that people come in here and see this mural here and it has that attachment to the original agricultural roots of Arizona, but then you see all the other things that contribute to that perception, but also tie in uh, the heritage of this state. It really kind of is creating a foundation even before you have the food of what Arizona barbecue is meant to be. That's certainly the goal. That's why Arizona Highways magazines uh, are proudly displayed mm -hmm. throughout. Uh, These are the all? Restaurant. We Most, had that, okay. Um, in fact, everyone is, yes. That's, th those okay. are old Arizona Highways covers. Yeah. And, um, you know, even the, there's subliminal within the subliminal. There is within that mural, you'll see, you'll find quite hidden uh, the five C's of Arizona. You know, you talk ah. about cattle and citrus and copper and all those things and climate. Um, those are hidden within the mural. So, yeah, there was, there are many layers uh, that we attempted to evoke uh, a really rich Arizona slash Gilbert history. Well, I mean, and I like too on the far, like the closest to where you're ordering is mm -hmm. the Hoover Dam, yeah. right? Uh, and then you have the the waterway, which I assume sure. is like the actual. Well, without uh, the dam, you don't have uh, the canals and all the wonderful things that yeah. allowed Gilbert. You know, we were the hay capital of the world. Yeah. Really? That really means something, okay? Yeah. And during World War One, that meant a lot to our horses and so forth uh, in the in the military. And so, yeah, it's allowed us to, to thrive and prosper and allowed those farms to um, exist as long as they did. And then it's allowed us to become what we are today. Yeah. And so what brought you to this area? Because you're obviously very well versed in the history. I assume some of that is preparing for this concept. But was it deeper rooted than that? Yeah, I... Um, you know, as I as I indicated, I uh, live. Well, I grew up in Scottsdale. Okay. Um, Joe, so, were you a native of Arizona? No. Okay. No, I, w I was born in Detroit. And we can talk about Detroit pizza at uh, Joe's Farm Grill oh. at any time you wish. <laughs> <laughs> you have but, it. Uh, you have what? Detroit yeah, pizza. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. And, I don't know if that's on the list, but it's cool. all right. It is not. <laughs> we won't talk about the Detroit pizza at Joe's Farm Grill at all. All right. Um, but Joe grew up here. OK, Joe went to school here. Uh, Joe, we, we literally Joe's Farm Grill is the house Joe grew up in. That's really? Wow. Ah, homestead, OK, so our roots are, are, are very deep. And Gilbert, when I was growing up in Scottsdale, okay, I went to Saguaro High School, went to University of Arizona, Arizona kid. Um, Gilbert was, in our mind, I mean, we didn't know what Gilbert was, but it was an afterthought. It, it was yeah. largely, I mean, look at the growth. You know, when I was in high school, I don't believe there were 10,000 people. Okay. Uh, mm. Gilbert, Arizona. Was it a farm community? It was a was farming it? community. Yeah, okay, yeah. And um, it doesn't, you know, that just means we didn't, there was no compelling draw for people to drive from Scottsdale. Yeah. And now, you know, we have people from Scottsdale and Yuma and, you know, uh, Tucson in here every day. So yeah. it's been really cool uh, to see the draw. Well, as someone who grew up in Scottsdale myself, born in Salt Lake, moved when I was three, grew up there, I went to Desert Mountain High School, and so to now come here and experience this, that's a pretty uh, crazy coincidence and an interesting lens to look through is yeah. your experience back then, and then me, the next generation, sure. and I don't know exactly how that all lays out, but um, mm -hmm. that, that's a pretty interesting thing to think about, and I look at how much Scottsdale and Gilbert and whatnot have grown since I was uh, young. It's crazy to think about what this town must have looked like 
you know, a hundred years ago. So it is, um, and they've both grown up well. I think you know, before your time, Herb Drinkwater was a visionary uh, mayor in Scottsdale, Arizona, mm. and likewise, I think we've had some wonderful mayors and leadership here that have led to what you see. And that's that's a pretty crazy thing is how um, difficult it is and how complicated it is to set up a community that thrives like this. Because uh, in my opinion, they're few and far between, especially in Arizona, because it's so sprawling to find a community like this where you come down here and it has somewhat of a small town feel, despite being the biggest uh, town in <laughs> the country. Yeah. So yeah. Um, circling back to Joe's, yeah. after you guys began opening it up, opening up, what was the reception like from the community? Yeah, it was wonderful, um, you know, just to literally when we opened our doors uh, that morning, um, the town's economic development, uh, you know, director was our first customer as really? he ended up being at uh, the farm grill and at uh, the grill or at uh, Sky Harbor. And the community response was incredible. Honestly, it was something that was long overdue. They hadn't had a spot to gravitate towards. And um, I think more importantly, important than just the fact that there was a place to grab a meal there was a place to go hang out you know there's this mm -hmm. concept of third places mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. a place where you want to spend time and you want to enjoy your meal and so even you know you we were talking about intentionality um there's a reason we built it with this many usable seats yep. m almost 12 months of the year okay we wanted people to come and i think you know if if you go open a fine dining restaurant in north scottsdale you want your dwell time to be your customer dwell time at that table to be as limited as possible so you can mm. turn and burn right yeah and you need that you need if, especially if you're a waiter you know you want those people out yeah and our we actually look at it the opposite in the opposite way okay we want people to come sit enjoy mm -hmm. relax th there to be no pressure and so we had to have enough seats to allow you, you know on the one hand you want a place that can handle um, the bus load of geologists from Ajo who mm -hmm. show up, you know, with 80 people unannounced. Uh, we can do that okay, yeah. with our eyes closed. We do it all day, every day. And yet I need room for all of the other people at the same time. And so we built a place that, you know, essentially has about 400 seats and we can just wow. handle that. And we've attempted, you know, over time, we've enclosed this patio, air conditioned it, heated it. That grabbed another 85 wonderful seats 12 months of the year. We're in the midst of remodel um, architectural drawings where we will grab another 60 or so air conditioned heated seats uh, wow. out uh, to the east there. And wow. despite having all those seats and all those space, mm -hmm. I feel like I've come in at like 3 p.m. on a Wednesday and the place is packed out before. I don't know if that's exactly how it went. <laughs> that's how but my kids went to school. So, yeah, we <laughs> like that. I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys are open. You're getting the great response. Things are building. Mm -hmm. uh, is your menu pretty close? to what it is now or did you begin to add more things over time it's close i you know you're you hear from people what they're missing and you know certainly social media has played a role in that and uh you know yelp and google reviews and all those things yeah. and um we we actually take that as a challenge and so for instance we had uh, some feedback over the years that we weren't particularly uh friendly to vegetarians can you imagine mm. a barbecue place not what and what kind of place well, is we, this? we took <laughs> insults great insults i say um and for a variety of reasons one of which is we're not particularly uh we've got many things to offer vegetarians okay my one pound baked potato um, is an incredible meal. My salads are incredible and you don't need to put meat on that baked potato and you don't need to put meat on that salad mm -hmm. for it to be equally delicious and to have yeah. a nice homemade dressing on top of the salad and so forth. So, um, but we've added things and we heard that, you know, jackfruit was something, uh, mm. you know, folks, if, if you're vegan, you enjoy a jackfruit sandwich, as I understand many, many people do. And so we just determined to have the best. And yeah. so we've got a great jackfruit sandwich, mm -hmm. you know, for people. And then you can put that on your salad or you can put that on your baked potato. And we've increased our offerings. You know, we uh, we have a wonderful relationship uh, out, you know, next to the grill there. We also have uh, the farm at Agritopia. And so we do our best to incorporate um, as much of the pro local produce, nice. I mean, hyper local, I mean, yeah. 6.1 miles away. And so, you know, when they've got greens, we do a nice braised green here. And we've increased our offerings uh, across the board. But those are things that not just vegetarians enjoy. I love um, good uh, produce, uh, the bounty of the land. So um, we have added, we've at, we've attempted to add, they had peaches a couple of years ago at the farm at Agritopia. And I'm like, well, we could make a killer cobbler. And so we, we've added things as they've become important to our clientele. 
And yeah. you even have, uh, I believe at one point, I assume you still have it, a locally brewed beer as well, right? Uh, we're using 12 West, yeah. and okay. 12 West does an excellent job, and they brew the, the barbecue beer you see up there. Your own house uh, beer. In the cooler today, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a really yeah. nice Pilsner. It's won some awards. Uh, it's not a particularly high APV, but it's absol- and it's just delicious. It's a yeah. nice it's barbecue light drink. Beer. It's barbecue beer. Mm-hmm. It goes great with that brisket sandwich. Absolutely. And that Detroit-style pizza I hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... As far as the smoking process for your actual meat products, your barbecue products, tell us a little bit about that. Dig into that. Of course. Um, We endeavored, you know, before we opened to uh, figure out what the best smoking methodology would be. And that was, you know, 1997 when we were having those discussions. And we still have those discussions today because um, as as storied as uh, barbecue smoking is, it's also evolving. And so we don't rest on our laurels and we're always making sure we're doing the best. You know, if your brisket and your pork aren't getting incredible attention every day, there's no reason for you to open your doors if you're a barbecue Mm -hmm. place. And so we've really worked very hard for five or 10 years, I would say, to to hone our craft beyond where it was. And we've been using um, oiler pits. They're made in Texas. to, to many, they're the gold standard. Certainly, if you're going to use a rotisserie pit, the the, the mod se- uh, 700 is it's incredible. A thousand pounds of meats at a go- meat at a time. Mm. We have three of them. We're one of the few restaurants in the nation that has three of them. Um, but we're not going to stop there. We've you know have we mastered that craft well? I still have the same pit master that we hired in 1997. Wow, that's and, incredible. Uh, that's we're, awesome. We're, we're we're largely doing things. Um, even better than we did on day one we're getting better every day but we're not stopping there we're adding we just bought uh two offset smokers thousand gallons each and so sometime in the next three to four months when you come back and visit and i buy you uh i buy you lunch you're gonna find that we've got two thousand gallon offset smokers over there man Um, and we're excited about continuing to learn and evolve and grow and and serve nothing but the best proteins uh, but the rotisseries have served us very, very, very well over the years. It's the, the beauty of a rotisserie uh, is that it's self-basting. Okay, if you think about the fact uh. that you have you you take this large chunk of meat, and I think this is what people perhaps don't understand as they think about pricing in barbecue restaurants. Okay, that protein. Let's take a, a ten-pound brisket and let's put it in the smoker for 16, 18 hours. I get five pounds out of that, okay? Well, where did the five pounds go? Uh, The five pounds was busy basting all of the other briskets that are going underneath for 18 hours. And that's why it's so incredibly delicious. And that's why the bark is what it is. And that's why the smoke ring is what it is. And um, they've been they've been just awesome. So, and that's a kind of a different different approach, right? Because yeah. a lot of people do the offset sure. where it's yeah. it just sits there. That's exactly it's, right. Yeah, and, uh, that's you interesting. Tend to, well, you you truly have to tend to that. Okay? Yeah. You have hot spots. You've got these are hot, and this area is not so hot. And so you're moving things around. Just the opposite thing happens in a rotisserie. You're putting it in until it's done. Yeah. And so the the giftedness the um, you know, the, the wonderful aspect is knowing when it's truly done, and that's an art form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. You can have all, the, all of the thermometers in the world and all of the, the best practices in the world. It takes a true artist to know when a brisket is done and it's time to come out of that smoker. When I'm cooking fillets at home, mm-hmm. if I'm not cooking them like once a week, yeah. next time I cook them, there's a pretty high chance that I'll cut it in half and it's going to be cooked way more than it should have been. <laughs> yeah. And that's a tiny little piece of meat that's way easier to control, yeah. let alone on the scale of, you know, 10, 20, however many you fit in there, giant pieces of meat all You're at exactly once. Right. And, so, and, yeah. and even, you know, looking ahead to our offset smokers, um, they are sized such about 54 good size bad boy briskets will be in each one at a time. Do you, if wow. you don't have it already, you need a shirt that says "Bad Boy Brisket." There we go. That is, BBB. that is epic. BBB. Yeah, exactly. he has thought about it, yeah. right? Never. <laughs> really? But we do have a four B burger at Joe's Farm Grill. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's delicious as well. Man, I go and I can't ever get anything but the sa- the salad. The garden yeah, is it the really? garden salad? Yeah, it's delicious. Which is a, my wife is like she's like she's happy, yeah. but she's also surprised. She's like you're getting a salad. I'm like yeah. this is the best salad yeah. like ever. Uh, I think the beets really help it. Do you enjoy beets? I do. Yeah, yeah. we serve them here yeah. now as well. Oh, yeah, we love nice. Them. My uh, my girlfriend was not a big barbecue person. She doesn't like That's to sad. eat a bunch of different <laughs> types of uh, meat. She she likes chicken breast. She likes burgers. She likes it there straightforward, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But I will say that I brought her here and made her try the pulled pork sandwich one Thank time, you. and she now eats pulled pork. So yeah. uh, you've converted someone. <laughs> we try. Nice. We try. We try to do our part. And so, so I was going to say a quick question about about. Um, so I, I'm learning more and more about barbecue, and I know that each place has its own significant thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, and and I, what I know most particularly is like Texas's heavy pepper seasoning, yeah. right? Yeah, sometimes what, just salt and pepper. Just, yeah, Often yeah, but nice. but ha- the pepper is like a kind of the signature of yep. Texas. Yep. What is Joe's uh, approach to barbecue without giving out any trade secrets? Yeah, I don't need to give out trade secrets. <laughs> um, I, I, we, we share our craft with anybody who wants to know. I mean, we yeah. use... We didn't go heavy. There's a particular, that particular pepper they use is even, uh, it's a larger uh, pepper. And it just, there's an aftertaste um, that in my opinion is, it's, it's a bit much. And so sure. you need to temper that a little bit. But salt and pepper is a great approach. But we have two rubs here, okay? Because not every meat should be rubbed the same. Mm. Yeah, I think many places tend to, eh, salt and pepper today. And um, truly, we have a we have a sweeter rub that works much better on things like our ribs. Okay, our St. Louis cut, uh, you know, spare ribs are amazing, and one of the reasons is the great rub, and it's not just salt and pepper; it's a bit sweeter, uh, and yet, uh, you know, your briskets and your uh, those types of things gravitate they they benefit more from a simpler rub and so rub's important um, but love and care is really what makes it happen and I, I think you know it, it, I believe you led in with you know what's your distinctive what makes you guys special and I think um, that we didn't stop at the center of the plate because I think uh, side dishes and desserts tend to be an afterthought at way too many I, I eat at a barbecue if I travel I'm eating at a barbecue place or 10 <laughs> yeah. um, while I'm out and about. And um, we didn't stop there. And so all of our side dishes are homemade. All of our desserts are homemade scratch every day. Yeah. Um, and that's a distinctive because that's just not. You sure. know, I think most places, if you uh, go for applesauce, you're assuming they open that can or that jar that morning, you hope, or that yeah. week. Um, <laughs> and yet we literally take Granny Smith's and peel them by, you know. I, I, I walk in the back and I just, you know, shake my head at how many hundreds and hundreds of apples at a time we're peeling to yeah. make applesauce. And you have somebody probably on staff that does just peeling apples, right? Well, if you ask them, they would, <laughs> all of them would tell you that's all they do, yeah. <laughs> it's part of the duties, like rolling right. silverware, right? Exactly. Peel some apples, roll your silverware, and yep. you can get out yep. of here, yeah. <laughs> and so the uh, the ordering experience is a real pleasure, too, because once you get up to line, you've got everything laid out in front of you that you can see it visually right there. Your mouth is already watering because you can uh, expect what's coming. And that's a really inviting way for people to order. And with something like barbecue that isn't as established in Arizona, I feel like that's a really um, enticing way for people to try new things. Is that something you guys have experienced? Absolutely. Um, thank you for noticing. You know, it, th- there's a, certainly a visual aspect to it. And um, the fact that you are literally, you know, there is some signage up there, but signage can only do so much. Mm-hmm. When you look down and you see this bright red substance you don't really know what it is and so we want to engage in a conversation about homemade applesauce okay and so the visual is important the smells the olfactory part of this cannot be overlooked okay Mm -hmm. and um my brother and joe were in the coffee business years and years ago prior to coming into the barbecue business and there was certainly an olfactory you know component to that and if you ever went to the old coffee plantation downtown tempe at their flagship the first one you couldn't get within a city block without Mm. smelling the coffee being roasted Ah. okay well there's something to that well likewise as you're driving up here i hope you enjoyed the smoke we we Mm -hmm. gave you to uh savor on your way in Um, that's from the pecan wood you know and the many meats that are back there (laughs) um but once you get inside you can still you can smell all of these meats you can smell all those homemade side dishes and um yeah we like that we've thought about changing up um the concept i think most you know, everyone talks about all of the other places where they do barbecue and how they've set up their places. Um, many folks have the carver greet you, okay, and get your meat set up and so forth. And we've thought of blowing things up and trying to redo the line uh, on occasion. And we've just always come back to this because it works. It's inviting. Um, you're greeted with a smile. You mm-hmm. can't tell it because we're all still wearing masks. Sure, yeah. all right? But I promise you, they're all smiling. You can see it in the eyes, That's right? exactly yeah. right. They're smiling with their eyes for a year and a half. So, um, yeah, that's that's very important to what we do. 
Well, and you have it laid out, and this is a poor comparison to make, but you have it laid out like a Chipotle, right? Where it's in the individual bins. Yeah. And so the moment when one of those bins gets cleared out yeah. and someone brings a new one, you like turn to whoever you're with and do a little fist bump. You're like, yeah, definitely yeah. get some of that. Oh, yeah. a nice <laughs> That's quite true. That's quite true. Yeah. yeah. You know, we go through so much. Um, like, I highly doubt if anyone in the state of Arizona is serving as much macaroni and cheese as we do, for yeah. instance. Yeah. And when you see that fresh one coming out of the oven, it's just like... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be doing Something that. Something about yeah. fresh macaroni yeah. and cheese, you know, when you pick it up, the cheese is going to drip off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm a, I'm kind of the like, hey, I'll take the scrapes off the edge there, like yeah. those little burnt ones. <laughs> Don't you throw like, that away? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the dude's like, Understood. I'm not throwing it away. I'm taking it back so I can eat it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about your smoking process. Mm-hmm. Talk us, talk to us a little bit more about the meats that you have, and you have some stuff that you know. You talked about the jackfruit, some mm-hmm. of the not so typical products that you offer. Sure, I think in the atypical, it's typical in barbecue, but what we do is atypical, and the, and by that I mean our sausages. You know, mm-hmm. we. Uh, we have been we enlisted Shriner's sausage way back in the day. Okay, literally in you know 1997, and had great conversations with them. What can we do that's different? You know, and uh, my brother uh, developed a great recipe for our turkey jalapeno sausage. And um, does it sell as much as brisket or pork or, or turkey breast? Nope. Uh, is it amazing? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's here, as is um, our hot link. And again, we have Shriners to it and just the flavor profile with those spices and those meats. Um, we love, we love our sausages. Jackfruit's been a new addition, you know, brisket and pork put us on the map, but I'll tell you what, um, I would put our turkey and our ham up against any turkey and ham in the nation. Yeah. Um, I was going to say pit ham. I'm like, what the heck is pit ham? Because ham's great. Is, you know, like you add pit to it it's yeah. like hell yeah. yeah it gets better doesn't it, <laughs> yes, it does. and just like especially if it's called that you know by the manufacturer yeah. it's just I don't know it's just twice as good oh, so you pit. feel like yeah. a like a man like yeah. a and you like know we have caveman. barbecue pit beans for just that reason <laughs> ah yeah. I love it so sorry I interrupted yeah. that was that no <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah well, I love our sausages I, I love the fact that the you know you, you've always got the stars of the show but our supporting cast is very very strong mm-hmm well, and to make the point of supporting cast, you have uh, Shriners as a partnership for mm-hmm. 15 years. You said yeah. you have or the how, farm at Agritopia. Yeah, however sure. many years it is, I don't I don't think 15 yeah. was the right number, West. but um, 12 West. And then you have your pitmaster who's been yeah. around since the very beginning. Yeah, that is one of the most impressive things to me when businesses can make that happen because that yeah. means you're not only creating a great environment and experience for the customer, but you're creating somewhere that people are proud to work in and work with, and so. That is culture, really. What kind of culture? How would you describe the culture that you guys have built to manifest this type of experience? Yeah, I mean, my response to the culture is that we've just been incredibly blessed. You know, we we're not immune to any of the outside forces that have wreaked havoc on the restaurant industry in the country. Mm-hmm. Okay, we weren't immune to you know the financial issues in 2008. We weren't immune to hiring issues and and lack of staff. Um, but I think our culture has allowed us to emerge from those things. And even what we're going through now with the pandemic, um, our culture has allowed us to emerge uh, incredibly strong. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of thought just as you talked about you know we we had to think in 1997 about what the place should look like um for the next 20 30 50 years we had to think when we opened you know you you come into a new enterprise and um you know you're just everything's out of pocket right it's brand new place and we were debt averse Uh, there's not a penny of debt in this place and so it's like uh do we want a forty thousand dollar tractor in the dining room well it would look awesome (laughs) Um, do we want a 14 foot neon sign or a 16 foot well let's look at the pricing you're just thinking of everything and then you uh you're thinking of your people and how important they are to what you do and we have some of the best people okay in the business in the restaurant business not the barbecue business the restaurant mm-hmm. business are up there making your food and serving your food and tendering your your transaction every day. Um, we have uh, on the 25th of this month, Florencia Blanca celebrated her 23rd year with us, and she's wow. been uh, with a smile behind that mask, um, ringing people, you know, since 1998. Wow, that's awesome. And um, a lot of thought went into that, and it was very intentional. We um, opened up 
offering full-timers, medical, dental, long-term disability, short-term disability, life insurance. And those things sound boring on a podcast, but um, 401k with matching came about later. And those are the things that make your culture what it is. And those are the things when I walk into the kitchen and I look around and I see that the average seniority is over 50 years. um, I'm just so incredibly thankful Mm -hmm. that we had the foresight to think it was expensive. Okay. Um, But I think those are the investments that pay off for generations. And so, you know, we're just, we're, we're excited that we can do what we do. You know, we have... Um, if it's your anniversary at Joe's World Barbecue, you get a hundred dollar bonus on that paycheck on your first anniversary, and you, we up it by a hundred every year. Okay, wow. so my pitmaster I've been talking about, Big D, uh, he's getting. We're not going to say this publicly, but he's <laughs> but getting because people do the will math. be hitting yeah. him up for for a loan. But he's getting twenty four hundred dollars on his check in December. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. And um, you know, there's a gift to go along with that that's commensurate with your years of service. And so um, it's just been a joy to be able to do stuff like that. They, everybody here gets their birthday off with pay. Um, you know, we. I don't know. It, the government can tell you to do things, but it's so much more fun when you thought to do it yourself. You know, the government yeah. came along and, you know, they've done some crazy things with minimum wages and with uh, benefits and so forth. And it, we almost laughed because the imposed uh, benefits were significantly reduced from what we've been doing mm, since 1998. Uh. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that that culture has allowed us to uh, retain some great folks. I know it has. Uh, because I get to see them every day when I come in. When you say that's, you know, maybe boring to talk about on a podcast, but for me personally, and I hope our listeners as well, those are the kind of places that you seek out to support. And maybe you don't necessarily know, you know, people that come in here don't realize those specific details. Right. Um, but if you have staff that are excited and happy and doing a great job at their work every single day, you have to assume that some of those, those components are in there. And if you can go and support a business that is taking uh, the success that you guys have experienced and not just passing that on to shareholders or things like that, but also the people in the team that have brought up those businesses, that's the way, you know, somewhere like the United States is supposed to function. And for a place like Gilbert to experience something like that and have the growth that it has, that is really almost to me like the grassroots version of how you build a town like this because people can come and work at a place like this and build a future for themselves and when you don't have to worry about money all the time or your job or things like that and you have great employers like you that's how you get happy people walking around the streets and you know i assume when you have employment levels like that uh there's less crime in that area i don't know if that's an actual statistic but let's say it is (laughs) exactly right (laughs) who can fact check anymore (laughs) right so um i think that's that's a very impressive thing to be able to make happen. And is that something that you guys, you know, obviously you worked very hard to do it, but it, was it just something that, you know, before you even opened, you knew it was something that had to be that way? We knew it was something we hoped would be that way. Okay. You know, you, you can only do so much when you're planning and so forth. And did we intend for our place to be um, a special destination where you brought your friends and family when they came in from out of town? Absolutely. Did we intend for our place to be a celebration type institution? Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. We want people with birthdays to come. You know, we've we've offered a free birthday meal for 20 some odd years. Um, It's all very intentional. We want to be it's hard to open your doors and say we're going to be an institution but when people tell you you're an institution after 10 or 20 years um it's very gratifying and yep. it, it is yeah. cool that they uh, see it appreciate it understand it um and continue to come back and and uh frequent your place for all those years well i think i was going to say too i think to kind of go off what you were saying is you know nothing can get swept under the rug these days everybody knows everything about everyone right but but that's a good thing right because it, it kind of um, shows you some places that like, oh, I don't want to go support them, man. You know, but on the other side of it, it has folks like you, like if you do, we do talk about this on a podcast that people these days are seeking out places that have that type of, whether it's food, whether it's their insurance, mm-hmm. whatever it is, yeah. they want to be able to connect with brands that, um, that they can connect with personally, you know? Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's definitely, it's intentional, but it's cool that people pick up on it. Yeah, it, you, 
you can definitely tell most of the time, unless someone is a complete sociopath, <laughs> if they're a good person or yeah, not. Sure. You know, and that yeah. can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But you can tell if someone cares about you, and you can tell if a business owner cares about their staff. Right. And when you come into a place like this, you don't even think, you know, it, it doesn't feel like your typical business. Like I was saying before, it almost feels like a special place where you go and it's just like everyone's smiling. People are digging into their barbecue. There's we'll a lot of smiles that. here. Yeah. Like that. As <laughs> soon as this good. place opened, people were flooding in and just yep. looking around right now, you see people having conversations, having a good time. And that's, that's a very special thing to be able to create that type of experience. Yeah. And I mean, you've spoken to the transparency and you spoke to the fact that really nothing can be hidden anymore, you yeah. know, and it's, you have the WWW and you get, uh, all of the rating places and you've got your health department scores are online, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and it just anyone who wants to know anything can know it before they walk in the door. And, you know, I have the peace of mind going to sleep at night, knowing that when people start digging, they're going to find good stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And we yeah, we're very blessed. We, uh, you know, I don't remember the last time I didn't have a health department score of 100. You know, wow. well, what does that mean? That means my guys are really, really good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because virtually every place gets a ding here, or a ding here or uh, a bad one, you know, every couple of years or whatever. And we're just very blessed that and, and it speaks to, you know, the fact that there's some tenure there and people understand what it takes to be safe and people understand what sanitation means and yeah. what hygiene means and keeping people safe. Because, um, you know, I want to keep my employees safe. No offense to my customers, but I want to keep them safe before I keep my customers safe. Sure. And uh, if 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 COVID and this wonderful pandemic, uh, you know, hasn't done anything, it has um, upped the game in that regard. Mm. You know, and we continue to this. I think it's a great idea. No matter where you fall on masking or any of those other things, you should know your temperature when you walk in the building. Okay, and because um, you may not know that you're walking around with a fever, and they may mm. have nothing to do with COVID. And so we're, you know, we're taking the time to take everyone's temps and I want my, my employees to be safe. They will make my customers safe. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, like you said, no matter where you fall on it, just being intentional, it, that kind of, you know, circling back to the culture, if you're pushing an intentionality behind it, your staff will absorb some of that and impart it on customers as well. Sure. Circling back to the food and the experience mm -hmm. when you come here, um, Give a little bit of a background as to maybe what things that you personally like to eat the most. If there's something that you find yourself, a plate you find yourself sitting down with, and maybe some recommendations for people like the turkey sausage. Absolutely. Um, the turkey jalapeno sausage is bursting with flavor. Okay. And I don't think the word jalapeno in there should drive you away. My hot lake sausage is actually much spicier in the terms of flavor profile. The jalapeno is calling my name. It is. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So I, w I would go with that. Uh, my turkey. Okay. I eat my turkey at least once a week. And I, you know, I, you can tell by the size of me um, that I don't miss many meals. Well, a lot of them are turkey in this place. <laughs> And um, our turkey just, it just turns out so well and it's so superior to virtually all, you know, everyone's view of turkey is what they get at, you know, fries or, you know, the, the grocery store sliced up for them, deli turkey. My turkey's amazing. Mm. And to have homemade applesauce with that, um, my sweet cut corn's amazing. It's white and yellow corn together and a sweet butter sauce. Um, the braised green, turkey and braised greens would be my go-to. Those braised greens are amazing. It's very simple. Uh, there's a little bit of olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and some delicious, you know, fresh out of the ground greens. And uh, that's where I would go. Well, nice. I don't know how much longer I can bear not eating some food. And we still have some yeah, pictures yeah, to take. Yeah, so yeah. Um, for anyone uh, that has not been here before, come to Joe's Real Barbecue, downtown Gilbert. Order two of every single thing yep. on the menu. Including the beers. Gonna, yeah, including yeah. the beers. Two pizzas. And uh, continue supporting your local businesses. Tad, Thank thanks so much for sitting down with us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Likewise. Thanks, man.